Fab. So just some basic housekeeping rules before we give it a whirl. Please keep yourself on mute and your videos off unless you are a guest speaker. Um, and there will be ample time to kind of put your put, put yourself unmuted and your videos on as we go through. My name is Sonia Barlow. I'm the founder of Like Minded Females, aka LMF Network CAC. We're a not-for-profit and social enterprise enabling, empowering, connecting and educating um, women and underrepresented individuals predominantly into the spaces of tech, business and entrepreneurship. And today we have been very much humbled with Photobox and Eden Smith um, alongside our guest speakers who are supporting us running this workshop. So this workshop today is called How to Transition into Data. We have a number of amazing guest speakers who will introduce themselves just in a second. But again, I want to reiterate that this is your time for you. So please make sure that you get involved in the chat, that you share your questions, that you share your thoughts, because ideally this is where we can very much upskill you and help you to transition into um, data and really help you with the skills that you may have to may have to kind of obtain. Let us know in the chat who you are, where you come from, and most importantly, how we can help you. So just a bit before we begin, I guess most of you, I, well, I've, I've actually had a lot of messages from uh, many of you asking, why are we doing such a panel event or a workshop? And the truth is, is because the UK is one of the fastest growing employment countries um, and kind of uh, islands, let's say, when it comes to technology. We are ahead of the likes of Japan, France and India. And Google shows us that the word tech and data has been up 350% year on year, as well as tech nation sharing that the investment in data, data services, as well as AI, cybersecurity, big data, are a growing importance for technology. And then obviously we're all zooming in or, or kind of a, a jitsying in online at this moment in time and we're using technology but ultimately there are people behind who are working in the back service really focusing on the data element and the data is the new oil that phrase has been used plenty of times but the truth is that we are turning into a data rich nation and so we really wanted to provide a workshop where we could not only talk to data experts or those that have transitioned into data, but most importantly, share the learnings around us with, a, with our community so that everyone can also do so. And last but not least, we have to talk about that diversity in data. So until we educate, until we inform, and most importantly, until we really start sharing our knowledge as to how to increase and how to transition and how to grow in data, we won't really be able to diversify the landscape as quickly or as smoothly as we hope. So there are less than 15% of women or those who identify as non-binary, gender, um, uh, fluid and women in, in data, less than 15%. Less than 5% of them come from an ethnic or cultured background, which makes no sense considering if you have a diverse subset or a diverse team, you can increase your profits and productivity by a minimum of 20%. So topics that we'll be covering today include the skills you need to get into data, the diversity in data and what we can start doing today, and most importantly, the journeys of those who have been through this and currently are either building their businesses in data or thriving as individuals in the data set. So without further ado, I would love to introduce the panel. I'll introduce them one by one so that it doesn't get too complicated. And each time I introduce a panel member, please, can you just introduce yourself, give us a bit of your journey, your story, your background, and also answer the question, what does data mean to you? So if we start with Lucy, if you'd like to take the floor. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Lucy Lynch and I work with Eden Smith um, and I've been working with them for um, just over two about two and a half years now um, and I run the graduate uh, partnership program um, and I work with universities where we 
uh, working with data science cohorts across the country, and I facilitate their live projects, which they undertake for three months before they write their dissertation. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. There's obviously a lot more that goes on, but that's kind of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I do a lot of talking, a lot of listening, um, and um, hanging out with people, getting coffee, and um, making friends uh, with people that are probably wouldn't have even thought of um, kind of connecting with maybe five years ago. So my journey into data very quickly uh, was um, uh, quite um, off the wall, if you if you like. I was a stay-at-home mum. I'd taken five years out. I used to work in recruitment, but in sort of like IT and telecoms uh, and media, and um, I lost my confidence and all those kind of things that had to happen. Um, and I got back into working uh, with Eden Smith um, through using LinkedIn, basically, uh, became my best friend. I updated a, a profile and I got talking with Jez and Matt and they, they offered me a job. Bingo. Um, and here I am changing their world and everyone's world. So it's great. It's really incredible. I feel really honoured to kind of be part of this organisation because I get to help people thrive and nurture them in their data journey. And for me, data is a story. It's information that we turn into a story that's translatable, that um, gives the maximum kind of impact um, to, um, you know, to, to, to managers and to, to C-suite leaders. Awesome. That was great. Thank you so much. OK. <laughs> Before we go on to questions, I'm just going to, again, introduce the panel just for some basic housekeeping. I know some of you have just jumped on. If you don't mind keeping yourself on mute, uh, just so that we can make sure that the speakers have the floor and there's no background noise, that'd be awesome. So if Samia, if you'd like to go next, please. Hi guys, um, so I'm Samia Gazanfa. Um, I'm working for Photobox for the past two years. And prior to that, I just graduated. So this is my first company really. Um, I'm just new into my career. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been quite a journey and I'm um, quite excited to um, share that with you. Um, so I've come from a very strong mathematical background. I loved maths always. Um, and I always thought I was going to go into teaching. And then having to, I tutored for a few years and realised maybe tutoring is not for me because, or teaching is not for me because um, I wanted something different. Um, I wanted something where would um, you can uh, apply it to different industries and maths wasn't that. So then uh, teaching wasn't that. So then I decided to be an analyst because you can apply it to different industries. Um, it's quite more to, uh, you can apply it to different industries. So um, what's, what I, what's the data? What does data mean to you? Thank you. How do you define data, for example? Um, so data to me means um, it's powerful and game changing. Um, in today's society, it's very important, especially now with the coronavirus pandemic. And the government is using data to inform the actions that they're making and taking to tackle the pandemic. Um, to me personally, data is, um, um, it can it has endless possibilities and um, opportunities. It matters about who is has the data and how you're going to approach the data and to answer endless um, questions about anything really. Fab, thank you. Well, we've got some questions lined up. But let's go to the next speaker. Cyril, would you please um, introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Cyril Lutherot. I'm the founder of Neurobotics. Um, Neurobotics is a robotics research company that focuses on building autonomous aerial platforms. What does that mean? We, may be, we build more or less fancy drones for the construction and real estate market, specifically measuring and comparing models from architects and designs to real world models. My journey for data in, in the whole retrospect has been a quite an eventful journey. I would say more or less um, growing up as a kid, um, um, I've, I've been always inquisitive and mischievous kid. I used to have an RC car and figured out a frequency was the same frequency as TV. And I used to drive around and cut off the TV when my grandma was watching. So I've always been causing problems with data and all technologies. But, but like, data came along when I was when I was growing up. And, and more or less, I had my first computer, and, and it was a, 19, uh, a Pentium 4 in 1994, and I put a virus on it by mistake, and then the whole DOS system got wiped out. So, so it's been an interesting journey, but but more or less, now now that we're here today, data has changed in terms of um, the, by a quantum leap, where we have information at, at the finger of a tips with Google, we could Google anything. So it's been a really, really, really amazing journey, and, and, and I think data has to, has to do with a lot of what I do in day-to-day -day life. So that's me.
interesting they were for me um i was saying is that is that how you define data is it your everyday livelihood yeah i would say i would say that the the, the fact is with data is that Data is everywhere, and a lot of people don't see it. And, and anything's data. Let's, for example, with with our our drone company, and what we do is we convert, we we take videos and pictures, and we convert them into spatial maps. So we call them point cloud maps. So we're creating a digital twin of the physical world. So everything, every single point, every single dot in three D space is a point, and each point could be a measurement between the door and the window. So so to us, data is everywhere. Sparse data is everywhere. So so in that retrospect, data is is everything and is everywhere. Um, and, and the saying of data is the new oil is quite actually true because when you think about it, um, um, I lived in Texas for a while, I went to school there, and, and, and Texas is the haven of capital of, of, of oil, right? And the fact is um, people didn't believe that. They believe oil is the gold standard, right? Now now data is the new standard because the price um, per data, or price per pers per megabyte or information per person is worth more than oil, right? So you could buy a person, let's say, if you know about the person's phone number and email, you can target a customer. Is worth way more than, than than a barrel of oil currently. So, so the fact is that data is a new oil, and, and and the future of data is 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 still coming and transforming with with the stuff that's going on in this digital transformation age. So, yeah, thank you, awesome. And um, and last but not least, Talia. Hiya. Um, so I'm Talia Parkinson. I work at Sky as a senior BI and data product manager. Um, I've been working in data or in the data industry for the past, gosh, about 20 years now. Um, covered everything from marketing analytics, data analytics, to BI and reporting. Um, data to me is basically information. Um, I think um, it's one of those things that confuses people when you say the word data. Um, I work very closely with the business, um, so, you know, getting to understand what they need. Um, when you mention the word data for them, they're like, oh, it's not for me. Um, but all it is is information with context. Um, so, yeah, that's me. Awesome. Thank you so much. So one of the reasons we did that exercise, not only to know who our panel guests are, but also to get the thinking behind data, there definitely is a perception that data is technical and data is difficult and data is something that's not obtainable. But actually... What we've heard is data is a story, data is game changing, data is everywhere, and data is merely information with a context. And why that's important is because, similar to the workshop today, we want to make sure that we encourage you all to, to take that journey into data, but also remind you that you don't have to have a background in data, you don't have to be a computer scientist, you don't have to do a computer degree, you don't necessarily even have to have started your career in, in, in data itself you can fall into the world of data and still use your skill sets or your strengths to thrive forward. And that's extremely important. I'd also encourage questions throughout. So of course, we've got questions prepared, but it'll be great to understand what you guys want to hear, what you want to talk about, and most importantly, what you want to ask the panel. So I'll go to the first question. Um, Samia, so this question goes to you. Your story is extremely interesting. And of course, we've heard about you wanting to teach and then you wanting uh, to kind of go into maths. So do you mind just elaborating your story and mostly kind of focusing on how did you get that role into Photobox? So for, for many of us and those who are graduates, they might want to jump into a large company or a significant company like you did. And second, um, second point to that question is, you know, what are, what are the skills required? So if you could advise anyone now, uh, anyone either transitioning into data or anyone who's currently a student going wanting to go into that field, what are the three main skills that you would identify and, and kind of uh, educate them on, on upskilling themselves in? Um, so for me, um, the, to be an analyst, there's a few things that are required. One is that you can uh, be able to see a problem and be able to challenge it in different ways and see it from different angles. Um, but the three things you probably do need, um, in my as in my opinion, is the first you have to be able to have a good ability in mathematics and interest in statistics. Uh, a data analytics is requires math, so if you have that, that would be great. The second one would probably be to have uh, at least one technical skill, um, one pro at least learn one programming language, um, uh, whether that be Python or SQL. If you really are um, Work, having working knowledge of one of them, you'd be able to apply it to every other one, be easier than um, just going straight in. So definitely before 
going into analytics, do try and learn at least one programming language. And the third thing I'd probably say is um, learn how to analyze, interpret, um, and model data. Um, for many mathematicians, this comes quite naturally, but uh, for others, it doesn't. And for me, it didn't either. So I actually did a master's in business analytics where I got exposed to this, where you'd be able to translate um, some results of some analytics to an audience from maybe a not from a mathematical background. Um, so that didn't come natural to, naturally from for, for me. But you don't have to do a master's for this. You could easily, um, there's lots of research available from other analysts that have posted um, how they did some research and how they um, present their findings. And the more you read, the more you'll learn to that as well. So yeah, that's the three things that I'd, I recommend graduates if you're looking to get into analytics. Fab, thank you. And just a little bit more on your story and your journey. Obviously, you, you went to university, you did business analytics. What what did you find um, kind of the biggest challenge between graduating and finding a role? And equally, what can what can any of us start doing now if we want to head into that data uh, that data we met? Um, so I read a lot of articles beforehand. Um, luckily, the from my experience, the masters really helped. Before I had even completed my masters, I was already applying for jobs and started my role at Photobox before even completing my dissertation. So I was doing my dissertation while doing my masters. So as soon as you know you're ready and you've done your research, start applying and make sure you have some experience. Um, uh, companies are willing to take on work experience. If you can get hold of one, please do. Um, and just um, do some analytics in your free time. There's always um, uh, free uh, courses available or free models that you can play around with. So there's data already available everywhere. Just play around with it. Um, it'll be easy for you to talk in, through in interviews. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm just going through some of the comments. And, you know, some people have asked, they're going, uh, they're currently in fashion tech. They want to switch to data science. They want to really understand their roadmap. They're coming from the theatre industry, and again, they want to transition into data. Um, Sami, I'm going to get you back on. And we've had a question from Im that I think you'd be perfect for. So the first question is, how much coding is required and what are the most useful languages? So if you were to kind of give your, give your tips and tips on what language can they start learning now? Because you said there's a lot of free courses available. And the second is, are there any blogs or websites you'd recommend to stay up to date? Because you've already mentioned you read articles, you read books. Are there, are there any that you can kind of name and shame and, and uh, kind of share with the rest of the community? Um, yes, great. Um, so the first question was um, uh, about which programming to learn. Um, with my master's course, I actually learned um, R and um, I use SQL. But in my role at Photobox, of my first role, I'm heavily using SQL. So I would recommend SQL. Um, but I do find um, SQL to be... Um, it's, it's a very powerful tool, but um, R and Python are quite similar. So if you were going to choose uh, one, I'd definitely say SQL. And then after that, if you're going to choose another one out of R and Python, just pick one because they're very similar. And one's more of a statistical tool and SQL is more of a querying language. Um, so I'll go ahead with that. Um, and regarding articles, um, I don't remember the top of my head, but I'll link them in the chat for whoever asked uh, but there's loads available on the internet if you just search there's there's loads that would be awesome thank you so much and again any questions specifically for samia please do chat uh, put them in the chat but also she shared her socials if you scroll up and she'll share them again so get in touch with her directly if we go to lucy now so lucy obviously you work with students and you work with universities and you work with academics right so this is yes. probably one step before what samia is kind of discussing what so this question is twofold right so one what can universities start doing to support students who want to go into data careers but two and most importantly what can students or those who are from a non-data science background do today to upskill themselves and you know your your mindset is obviously coming from both a recruitment company angle so it's hiring managers but also as someone who works with universities day in and day out yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think there's plenty that universities can do. Um, and like with anything, you know, we can we can always do more. Um, so I feel like uh, things like career fairs are a really good idea, but with like on the spot interviews, 
so students can, can, can be interviewed on the spot, uh, which kind of helps them get through these, um, uh, the recruitment process a lot quicker. Um, I've often found working with larger organisations, sometimes the process of actually going through the process could take maybe even a couple of months, which is quite tedious. There's no need for this. Um, and obviously we're in you know, um, different times now, so we're understanding that actually processes and procedures can be put into play. So these, this kind of recruitment can be done very efficiently. Um, obviously, universities are engaging with data-centric organisations to get their live projects for the students is key. That's um, obviously... That's, 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 uh, right. You see, I'm just going to... One second. One second. There's a little bit of an issue just hearing you. Um, so oh, OK. Jump back on and just maybe... I think it's... If you just speak really slowly, that might be it. I find I also speak really fast on webinars, and then for some reason it can't pick me up. Not not really sure what it is. Okay. 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 I'll, I'll speak slower. Is that better? Yeah, that's far clearer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, so just go, going back a bit, I just think that you know universities were twinning with data centric organisations to 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 work with them to find their live projects is really, really key. Uh, um, things like career coaching uh, for universities to, to invest in, which will help um, which will help the students to get a kind of successful mindset going on. Um, asking universities to be open to feedback. Um, and we offer we offer feedback uh, to the universities which has been very successful uh, directly from industry. Um, to make sure that their uh, course material is aligned with actually what industry needs. Um, and, you know, partnering with industry so students can get a, um, a joint technical qualification in something like uh, SAS or AWS. Um, and also universities could help with um, setting up mock interviews and working with the recruitment partner or something to um, really kind of um, skill up students so that when they go into the job market that they're, they're more prepared um can you can you hear me yes but you again we just have to speak really slowly so i think that's for everyone in this call is we just need to just just be a little bit mindful you know obviously we talking about data and it's ironic because technology isn't always on our side and it <laughs> seems that despite all of these conference um calls and all, all of these kind of tech hubs now booming they can't actually take more than 30 people on the call. So <laughs> that's just something we have to kind of live with. How how are you currently working? And, uh, you know, maybe you are, maybe, you are, maybe you're maybe you not. Are you currently working with universities during this time? So have they taken their learnings online, for example? Are they asking you for help when it comes to students? And if not, is there anything that you um, recommend they can start doing? Uh, yes, so the uh, the universities have all gone online. Um, I've stayed in contact with my students and um, and obviously with the universities and um, they're doing um, everything they can to make sure that the students um, get their dissertation on time um, and um, they can kind of carry on. So they've been they've had to work really hard to to get everybody online. Students are, are more um, quick and easy to, to do this because it's kind of their world. Um, but I found academia, you know, has has struggled slightly, but they're, they're, they're getting there and they're doing their very best, which is great. I think you did ask a second part of the question, which was, "What can yeah. students do?" Um, yeah. So, so I also during this time. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Je definitely during this time, as you know, many students or uh, are either out outside of their kind of natural day to day, um, and equally many people are furloughed at the moment. You know, millions of people are furloughed. So during this time, if we wanted to upskill, if we want to transition, what can we start doing? Yeah, so I would say utilising platforms, you know, like YouTube, Udemy, Coursera, um, Data Camp, Code Academy. Um, these are all online, you know, platforms that, that, that the students can go on to. Um, and, you know, a mix of theory that you're learning at the university 
university, but also practice is, is absolutely vital. Um, and, you know, using GitHub to, to join some open source projects, um, you know, doing quizzes and logical exercises. You know, I often think, you know, what's the difference between a, a good data scientist and a really good data scientist you know is 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 basically that that creativity and that and that curiosity um and being able to um being able to ask ask those questions so being able to read around the subject not every obviously data is everywhere but you know there's beautiful data in art and literature and history and geography you know and we should be as data scientists data analysts we should be looking at the whole landscape because it all interconnects um, and by having a, a varied and a wide kind of you know sort of uh, landscape that, that you you're quite astute at it will give you a better understanding of what what kind of questions that you should be asking as an analyst, which is going to be key to your stakeholders. And, you know, the best thing about being a data scientist is that you're going to be telling a story. So you need to not only know the facts, you need to know what questions you should be asking. Thank you so much. And that's great advice. It's great advice, especially for Catherine. So Catherine has already said she's a creative freelancer trying to expand her understanding of the creative tech industry and find new industries to transition into. So of course, as Lucy's mentioned, you know, think of data science as a, a kind of mix between logic and creativity. You have to be creative. You have to be curious to really ask these questions and ask the right questions. And then be quite logical in your approach. As Sami has already mentioned, you have to have uh, and be those kind of right, right, and practices. So, Cyril, going and thinking technology, and you're running your own business, uh, which has a strong data source. Can you share your journey and your thinking behind? Yeah, sure, sure, definitely. The journey in what, in what context? The journey as in like how we built our data pipeline, the journey of the whole I company? Think or, or what what the journey of what you were doing prior before you took that leap of faith to turn into an entrepreneur. So obviously you had knowledge in data and then you took that leap of faith. And now a little bit more about the data you're using day to day uh, in, in, your, in your workplace. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. There, there, there was there, there is there was a big transition. Um, I I was studying software engineering at university, so necessarily, um, um, I had I had a software background, and and that background specifically transitioned into a research lab and a research position where I was able to do research and kind of focus more on robotics and AI. But but the the matter of the fact is, um, um, data. My 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 journey with data specifically transitioning from where I was to the startup world was more of a leap of faith. I kind of jumped off the cliff and built my wings on the way down. Um, so that, that that's kind of how I kind of kind of did that specifically transition. It was like, like I dropped out of university, dropped out of the lab, and started to to, to build my own company. And I don't recommend that for anybody. Um, definitely go the route and get a degree. Is this is what I recommend? Um, but but I felt the need that I had built something really impactful and something really game changer and something that could that could that could shape the world in ways I could imagine. So this was the time now. I, I couldn't wait because if I waited another three four years. The market would have built it and already caught up to it. So, so it was more of a gut instinct, and and the market need was was the was the drive to specifically kind of kind of go out there and create companies specifically focused on robotics and in building AI and machine learning systems. Awesome! Thank you for that. And what is the most exciting thing that you found through through kind of now running your own business and taking that leap of faith? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. So going back to uh, uh, going back to your point about data is the new oil. Um, um data is key because I think data and recruitment and data in 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 in, in the workplace and data and in, in pipeline general is is very essential. Like for example, um, without data you can't quantify anything, and specifically you can't have like actionable results, right? So for example, in the workplace, data is good to identify biases. For example, if you have small data sets or small sizes, um, it tends to spark doubt, right? Um, versus if you have a bigger data set, adds more information and it provides more available talent. 
Um, likewise, it helps improve decisions. So for example, if you're recruiting and you have data in your recruitment process, you know, 50% of candidates are minorities, 10% of it hires are people of color, yada, yada. So you kind of know specifically what your background is and who you're trying to target, um, keeping them uh, in, in that context and it allows you to cast a wider net. So for example, if you're able to reach more, more, more social media outlets, those are more specific um, geographic limits, like for example, we're we're all zooming in right now rather than meeting in person. Um, it kind of test is a testament to 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 that kind of ability to say we don't have to be here to take a job interview. You don't have to come on site. We could remotely and talk to you and see how you are, and then eventually come on come on site for onboarding. So so data is changing the way we do things, especially in the remote work area in terms of hiring. I know currently right now VCs and investors are are taking in the investment remotely, which is a first because because usually people want to see you meet you get to know you. Um, and that being said, um, um, that's that's the way data is changing the, sh the shape of the landscape and the startup world in general and business world. Yeah, thank you. And my last question is, obviously, we know each other because we're a part of really similar communities. And we try and stay, stay, or we now kind of mix in a similar crowd. I guess my last question is, um, you know, how important is community and in in building your in and, and networking and building that profile within the within the data landscape? Definitely, N network is everything. I think I'm sure this sounds cliche, but your network is your 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 your, your network is your network. Um, because because I think I think everyone knows this, or those who don't know. Um, it's really interesting because having those resources available allows you to leverage them easily. And I think touching on Samaria's point, um, for example, like like using Coursera or, or Udemy on these courses, I recommend edx.org. edx is a free MOOC online um, sponsored by MIT, Harvard, Yale. And you can get micro degrees from Harvard, Yale and all these top Ivy League universities for free. So, so although Udemy and Coursera are charged and everything and they have their own right to do so, um, edx is much more open initiative to do that. So, so edx is definitely valuable. Um, but also data camps and, and data schools. I have a friend named Leah. She 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 came back from from Canada to the UK and she said, "Oh, I got a law degree. I can't do anything right now. What should I do?" And I said, "Have you tried data science?" And she goes, "No. What do you mean?" I said, "Check out um specifically um they have this Dev Mountain course where they have the um, like General Assembly one of these and she did a boot camp specifically um and and, and she did uh, and she did a boot camp and and after in three months she got a job in, in data science and which is amazing because you don't have to have a specific degree. You could do these boot camps and get these um, micro degrees and these courses to help you um, um, validate and, and, and get your network out and specifically reach out to people. But but building a network, you have to attend events like this, specifically like like minded females. You have to kind of go to these workshops and go to these different showcase events and, and get yourself out there. You can't you can't expect to reach a, a crowd of people without 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 going and taking that leap of faith. So that, that kind of brings back to the point of what, what I think Lucio has touched upon is, is you want to have bridge that connection to your to your external network and and universities and so on and so forth. So getting stuff out there and building presence online is one of the vital roles in that. Yeah, no, thank you so much. So Esme, you answer you asked a question. It has been answered, and obviously, um, Cyril, you didn't get to read the question, but it was exactly what you just asked. Is you know how do you how do you just do it when you can't go to university at this point in life and you can't start a business? So of course you can upskill. There, is, there are formal degrees. And, and the one thing I would say is, you know, uh, companies and, and again, Eden Smith and Photobox and uh, Andy and Jezza are on the chat. We'll, we'll hear from them in a bit. They can also reassure you that, you know, people want to hire for people now as well. They can upskill you. The talent is there. As long as you have a basic understanding and you have the passion, you know, they, they really want to make sure that you they uh, that they bring on the right talent. You know, Andy's already said, the three skills are lots of curiosity, storytelling, and data literacy. It's just having that idea where you're where you want to start and and you you want to give it a whirl. And that takes us nicely on to Talia. So Talia's been quietly waiting in the background. Um, <laughs> and I guess Talia, you are our data expert. You know, out of the panel, you've had the the most vast amount of experience, obviously working for the sky, likes of Capita and then for Sky. So our, our question is twofold again, you know. Data's changed and data is changing. And right now we're, we're living in the middle of history. Data will change our lives going forward. And so is tech. So the first is, you know, how how do you think the next five years will look like and how should we prepare ourselves? And secondly, and this kind of relates to a lot of questions that have been asked in the chat. As a hiring manager, what do you look for? from candidates who are moving into data. So not those who are necessarily already data analysts or science degree backgrounds, but those who are transitioning, what is it you look for uh, most importantly? So 
The first is what does a future of data look like? And the second is what do you look for in candidates who want to move into data? Brilliant, yeah. So I think um, to answer your first question, I think we just having spent so much time working in data, I think one of the things that I've realized over these years is that um, data is no longer needed to be structured. I think when I was working in data back, you know, talking about 20 odd years ago, everybody was around data warehousing and building structures and, you know, especially with regards to reporting and things like that. But I think with data science um, and all of the new tools that are available on the market as well, it's very much about people are into real time data. They want to know, you know, that the urgency for getting the answers is so much higher than it used to be. And I think that's just going to increase. Um, we're definitely seeing it from a perspective of, um, you know, people are not willing to wait to see yesterday's data now. They want to see it happening in the moment right right away to be able to inform those decisions that they need to make straight away. So I think that's one of the biggest things um, that has changed and will continue to change over the next five or six or ten years. Um, the need for data um, as close to, as possible to real time. Um, I think in addition to that, it's um, how we use data as well. and I think, you know, we talk a lot about data being a technical role or, you know, people working in data being a technical role, but data is used by so many different areas across the businesses now that it's no longer a tech, just a technical role. You've got people in finance using data. You've got people, um, you know, within the performance or trading teams using data. So I think that data literacy, teaching people how to use data and how to understand how data works together um, is one of the big curves that's going to happen definitely within the next couple of years. Um, to answer your second question around hiring, so yes, I think for me, and I've, I've seen it um, pop up quite a few times in the chat as well, when I'm personally looking um, to hiring people uh, to work within my teams, I'm not so fussed about um, the tools or the languages that you know, because I think languages are changing so much. Um, you know, you could be an expert in this language now, within five five years or so, that language is no longer redundant. I think SQL is only the only one that's kind of held its ground for, for that um, length of time. Um, so it's definitely a good foundation, but that's not something I, I tend to look for. What I tend to look for is curiosity is one of the first ones, um, because you can't teach curiosity. It's something that somebody has or just doesn't have. Um, problem solving. Uh, one thing you realize working with data is that data is never clean um, and, you know, all the theory in the world won't prepare you for the real world when you come into using data. So I think definitely problem solving and trying to unpick um, problems that you come across with while working with data. Um, storytelling is really, really key. So, you know, data is fine. But as I said, you know, data to the business is just numbers or, you know, um, points of data what makes it useful is turning that data into information and adding context to it um, and applying it so that the business can actually take it and make use of it because there's no point in gathering all this vast amount of data if they can't actually put it into any use um, so I think storytelling and creativity and the two go hand in hand are really 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 key um, and whenever I'm I'm recruiting people I always ask them what excites you about data which part of data excites you you know some people are more comfortable with doing the mathematical stuff and you know writing the code and that's that's great and I've got people in my team that do that but I've also got people in my team who are fantastic with working with the business and translating you know acting as that sort of translator between highly technical side of the business and the, the rest of the business the marketing teams and the, the sales teams and the finance teams and it's being able to translate what they're looking for into what you can um, provide and I think that for me, having that skill is one of the most valuable um, that I've come across when, I'm, when I've gone into hiring and something that I use myself as well. Yeah, thank you for that. And I guess you're, you know, I, you're, I'm, I'm just waiting to ask this question, to be honest, just the kind of, you know, person I am and the network I run. Um, diversity, yeah. right? It was coming, of course, it's really important. Diversity doesn't just mean gender, it means that skill set, right? And data is one of those functionalities and in industries now or, or kind of landscapes where we need diverse skill sets, we need diverse and unique ways of thinking. So a lot of you in the chat have spoken about alternative routes, so you don't necessarily know where to start. Um, and what if you don't have the access to university, you're starting your new business, right, completely fine. And like you've already mentioned, you know, you're looking to hire on skills what can we do as an individuals what can we start doing to ensure that we are diversifying data what are we doing uh, what are you doing as an individual and then what are you doing as a as a 
as a corporate professional? Because I believe the two things are slightly different. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. Um, I think for me, it's um, so obviously in my corporate career, which I'm sort of transitioning out of at the moment, um, it was all about understanding the strategic objectives of the business and actually using data to fulfill that or to monitor it or to track it. So I think, um, as I think has been mentioned in the chat as well, it's if you've data is only gets going to get sponsored if you've got business buy-in. Um, and to be able to get that business buying, you need the business to understand the value of data. It, it can be quite an expensive commodity to house, you know, to store, um, to, to translate um, and get in front of the business. But until they see what the value is um, in data, the, the, you're going to be fighting a e never ending battle. Um, I think from a personal perspective, I mean, where I, I so I work both in, you know, the, the data side of things and also the diversity and inclusion side of things. And I think it's marrying those two things in terms of bringing data to people's fingertips, being able to recognize and how to translate data. And I've seen it with this whole COVID thing, you know, you've got a whole bunch of numbers up on the screen. And yes, those, that, that's great for transactional information, but it's actually putting more context into that. Have you, you know, split the data by this or looked at it in this way or, um, you know, and, and that's where the curiosity side comes in. And that's the bit that excites me about data is it, you can use it in so many different ways um, in your day-to-day -day lives, even looking at, you know, when you question some statistics you see, um, be curious about what actually contributes to that, that information. How do they get it? There's so much open sources of data at the moment. Anybody can access vast amounts of data. Um, and it's just, a, yeah, as I said, a, from an individual perspective, if you're looking to get into that field, start to build up your curiosity in terms of how data can be applied in different areas. Thank you so much. And for everyone in the chat, please remember that these panelists, our speakers, our sponsors are there for you to connect with, for you to talk to afterwards. If we don't go through every single question, just get in touch with them. Um, Jess says, Tali, the translation skill is a fantastic perspective. Is this the same and accurate? Is this the same as accurate data interpretation as creative storytelling? I think it's definitely it's two different sides of the same coin. Um, you're not going to be able to tell um, an effective story without the accurate data. Um, but I think it, the two skills can be married in, you know, as long as I said, the, the tools that are available to translate that data or to, to interrogate that data are becoming easier and easier to use. Um, and I think it, it is then taking that information and marrying both sides of, okay, what is available to me from a data perspective and what, am I, what is the business trying to figure out or what, what's, their, what's their need? What, what problem are they trying to solve? And that, that's where that translation skill comes into it. Fab, thank you so much. Um, of course, if anybody else has any more questions, please get involved. I want to invite Andy. So Andy works and uh, it leads up the, the team for Photobox. Um, and Andy, of course, this question is very relevant to yourself. So both one in terms of as a hiring manager, what do you look for? And two, what are we doing to diversify uh, the, da the data set and the landscape? So hi. Um, so for me, what I look for is um, there's some hygiene factors. Uh, you've got to have some maths or stats background. For me, there's a level of data literacy that just needs to be there. If, if you can't describe the differences between the different averages, mean, medium, mode, then I'm not really interested because when I look at some of the data that I've got in terms of how people build books, um, you can spend an hour doing it, or we have people who build a book over the whole of the school year because they're building a book for their, for, that shows their child through the school year. So if you're trying to do an average of how, what's the average time it takes to build a book, you'll get some really weird number of three months. And if you start making decisions on three months, then you're, you're going to be making really bad decisions. So that basic level of um, data literacy is, is key. Um, coding is another hygiene. Um, for me, I don't really care what language you code in. It's more the, more the mindset. I mean, I programmed in Fortran. That shows you how old I am. Um, but it's a level of you've got to be to be able to construct a logical thought, a logical way of bringing things together, and be able to code it. Whether it's Python, um, Pig, whatever. I, I, I made a conscious choice of not of stopping programming um, because I used to start dreaming of it, and then I didn't like want my dreams to be full of code. Um, but there is a level of you've got to be able to have that mental model be able to code. Once you've got those basic hygiene factors, for me, it's then I'm looking for personality. I'm looking for a flair. I'm looking for something different. So we've said a number of times, curiosity. Yeah, for me, it's, it's, not, it's not one question. What's the five questions you're going to ask of this bit of data? Or I've got, the, I've got an answer of five. Why is it five? 
why isn't it, why isn't it six? Why isn't it, why isn't it seven? Why isn't it four? What, what, what if I had this? What if I had that? It's that level of being really curious about that particular instance of data to enable you to, to, to drill more around. So that's probably what I want with the curiosity side. For me, the storytelling coming out again is if I'm going to go to a business user and say your answer is um, 22, they'll go, well, why? And I think, um, it's well, here's your business problem. Here's the context it's in. Look, if you do this, do that, this is what it means to you. And these are the actions you can take and this amount of money you can save or money you can make on it. So it's been able to turn that bit of that cross tab. Imagine a six by five cross tab and putting an Excel spreadsheet and someone saying, right, now describe that. And, that, and make a story out of that cross tab. So that that is is a skill. So learn how to tell a story with it. Um, the other the other one I think for me is being able to talk, being able to uh, talk about anything and everything, and be happy talking. Um, uh, yes, you can code. Yes, you, there are coders. But if you want to be an analyst, and you want to be an analyst to make a difference in a business, you've got to be comfortable talking to anyone from a CEO to a customer services rep and just learn about what, what their challenges are and we'll learn about what they're using for, to make decisions or not. Because if you get in their head and get to understand their language, you can communicate with them, they're gonna to listen to you more than um, someone who's, who doesn't really speak their language. So maybe that's sort of the common, common things I, I look for. Um, I, I must admit, I also look for a bit of personality. Um, uh, I'm a I'm a mathematician, statistician that decided not to don, don my white lab coat and go into the pharmaceuticals. Um, I was doing data science before they even did data science. I, I'm going to work with someone I'm now, different today's age because we're all working from home. But for me, yeah, I'm in the office with someone. I want to have fun with them. I want to be able to see that they're enjoying themselves. And when they're in the office, they're enjoying that. Therefore, they can enjoy playing with the data. Because um, when you're when you free, your mind is free like that, you are going to be thinking much more. Um, randomly, diversely about the data that you've got. Um, so for me, they're the sort of things I look, look out for. Um, in terms of diversity, um, it, I, I like every single person who has a different mind take or, or take on things. Um, I have a real interesting um, dichotomy at home. I, I've, I've got a master in applied statistics. My wife's got a, a degree in astrophysics. I've got a 15-year-old girl who hates maths, um, and she hates maths. It's like, why? Maths is wonderful. Maths is brilliant. It's exciting. And I get the look of, yeah, really? Um, so for me, diversity is a bit of, I'm probably more around, I want to drive more young women into data, into the excitingness of what maths or STEM subjects are, because I love it. My wife loves it. I, I struggle to understand why my 15-year-old daughter doesn't love it. Um, but hey, uh, we'll still work on that. But but for me, there's an element of how do I light that touch paper for someone to be really interested in it and, and, and drive a career out of it. Thank you. That's really, really, really helpful. So you didn't actually introduce yourself. So do you want to give everyone a quick introduction as to what you do and, and how they can contact you? Yeah. So hi, um, I'm Andy Ruckley. I'm the Director of Data uh, BI Analytics for Photobox. Um, so contact me uh, on LinkedIn or um, uh, I, I probably have a Twitter account. I may look at it every now and then. I'm a bit of an old fuddy-duddy with things like this. Um, so I, I've spent 25 years um, doing data in some kind of shape or form from data warehousing to BI to analytics to data science to building teams and capability. I, I love building teams that are high performing, that are really, um, who really want to play and understand what's happening with data and then get that story across. Awesome, thank you so much. So, and there's, there's um, uh, Nyara, you have a question. So in applying, is there a way to, is, aware, uh, is there a way you suggest to best showcase your storytelling skills? So Andy, I'm gonna ask you, and then I'm gonna ask everybody else in the panel as well. As a, as a manager and as somebody who works with data teams all the time, um, and as somebody that we have to ultimately storytell our data to, do you have any tips and tricks on how they can practice their storytelling st skills, especially if they're not in, uh, if that's not a skill that comes naturally to them? Um, like the person who just uh, has responded to me, maybe your daughter needs to make it, it needs to be made, made interesting. Yes. 
That, that's probably what it is. How to turn that cross tab into something interesting. But if you can turn, maybe that's it. You look at a cross tab or look at a, a particular uh, Excel spreadsheet or something and go, right, how can I make this interesting? How can I get someone to go, oh, that's a bit of insight there. That's probably the, the, a, a good bit of, of, of learning you could do. Thank you so much. And just to start wrapping up, um, I'm again very mindful that you've asked loads of questions and there's loads of questions coming through. We did just plan an hour for the session. So if you would like a follow up, of course, get in touch with us. We're happy to do another one. Get in touch with all of the panelists, the speakers, Eden Smith photo box. As we start wrapping up, I would like to invite Jez to the floor. So Jez actually heads up Eden Smith. And I think some of you thought he was Eden, which is fine. <laughs> uh, um, you're, you're obviously running a very large scale kind of recruitment company and you focus on data. What, what, how do you see the industry changing? So from your perspective, what can you share? And equally, what are, what are the skills of the future that, they, that everyone here should start learning and, and kind of contacting, um, get, getting involved in? Uh, wow. Okay. Um, so yeah, so just a, a bit of context and my background is 25 years in, in tech recruitment, um, across Europe and my business partner and I set up Eden Smith to purely specialize in the supply of data people across five functions. So, um, what we've been doing is looking at how the market segments, um, specific skills, competencies, and attributes for individuals, um, and then trying to get, uh, businesses, job seekers uh, in alignment with what's going on in the market. So we typically look at it as a, an exec level of data leaders like Talia and Andy, who actually I've really enjoyed listening to. So anybody that's been on this call, I hope I hope you've listened to those guys really well. Um, and uh, typically we look at it in architecture, engineering, or architecture and engineering, science analytics, uh, and data management. So there's a whole world around this, um, you know, data ethics and how we catalog data and all this sort of stuff so that's what kind of what the business is doing and and um lucy we have a passion to try and help people get into data which is where the nurture program was born so you know that that came from there is a skill demand out out there uh, it is for what the the data leaders on this call are looking for uh, they're looking for all all people who have that curious passion um to get into into a market where actually uh, it's an industry where data un underpins everything in an organization and it's a uh, it's really interesting so coming from a technical recruitment background we were three months into our incorporation of the business and nearly went out of business because we looked at it like a technical solution to the market and what's really important for everybody to understand is that data is a business driven initiative which is enabled by technology so for anybody on this call you know don't get caught up in do i need to learn this skill or that skill if it's technical go back to the fundamentals does it excite you does data excite you do you really like going well i've got that set of data over there and wow look what it's telling me and if i look at it in a different way look what it tells me then and then get your parents in the room and say look i found this out let me try and explain that to you so that you get interested and i think if you can do that um, when you're coming into the market or looking for a new, you know, career in data, then you're halfway there because um, I did want to share you know, just a few slides, but we are running out of time. And maybe I think if everybody who's interested in more wants to jump on another one of these, I'd love to talk more about where the job market is at. I think some of the skills that you guys can learn, I definitely think at the moment, if I'm looking at demand, SQL is a fundamental skill, skill that everybody should be learning even if you're in data science or an analyst or you're in engineering you'd need that and I, even i have requirements these days coming into our business for data governance professionals so these are data management professionals who still need to understand sql so sql is is a fundamental i agree with uh samia you know python or r uh the market typically is seems to be preference have a preference over python at the moment python but uh either one i think is good but it is more those personable <coughs> skills and uh, competencies that are more important. Um, I don't know if I even answered your question, Sonia. <laughs> well, honestly, it's it's completely fine. It's just interesting to hear it from your perspective because obviously you're doing, you, you are the middleman between a company yeah. and, and someone who wants to go into data. And so yeah. hopefully what this, 
kind of panel event and though it's been quite brief it's been top line by design it's it's taught you all the holistic view of those who have gone into data and those who are hiring for data and those who are managing those in data um jez if you of course if you want we can we can link the slides into to the email that we sent but equally everyone who's on the call we've we've shared all of our linkedins we've shared the emails we've shared all um all ways to contact us please do get do get involved in any way so i'm just going to take it back and start kind of wrapping up with the panel um and i'm going to start with uh i'm going to start with cyril um and the first question the last question is out of everything you've heard right because obviously we've heard a lot and everything you've said what is your one go-to hygiene factor when it comes to data? Your one. So obviously we've you've, we've used words like curiosity, personality, storytelling, proactiveness to learn, talking. What what is the one if you had to just kind of um, kind of summarize it? I would say uh, ethic, ethics um, in general, um, and this is a much controversial topic um, because, for example, Google did a project where they were trying to detect criminals, and they ended up stereotyping a certain race. And ethics is definitely key. Um, and I believe there is a there is a George Orwellian kind of thing where they had a specific um, uh, organization or or uh, I believe it's, it's the um, AI and data intelligence um, 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 like act where they kind of teach robots to have certain formats. So like a robot cannot do this, a robot cannot kill this, this, the idea. So there's this formats and the standardization of ethics across AI and data science. But even when it comes to robots, this is going to be a big thing because in the next five years, you're going to see drone delivery. It's going to happen. Like in five years, the government is going to start doing it this year already. It's going to happen. And then you're going to see butlers and then you're going to see autonomous cars. So it's just a matter of time before you see that quantum leap from the information age to the symbiotic age where man and machine are merging and we're seeing much more in everyday life where machines are helping us as an enabler rather than specifically as, as a way to kind of hurt us, right? So is that ethics and what we used to apply and drive these, these machines is what the outcome will be in the future. Yeah, hopefully, thank you. Hopefully that answered what you said. Honestly, it answered more, and we're going to have another question in a Q and A about robots because I saw this news article the other day which said, "Should robots have the same rights as humans?" And I just looked at it like humans aren't even there yet, one hundred percent. So I don't know where robots are coming into play. But the point being that if you want anything AI, big data, robots related, but also information on alternative routes to data finding your own business and then networking, please get in touch with Cyril. Of course, all of his links are here and thank you. Um, Samia, I'm gonna go to you next. So same question, one one kind of leaving statement when it comes to data, what would you say? Um, having heard everyone else, I do think curiosity is definitely the one to go for. Um, you've got to be curious about what you're going to do with everything before you tackle any question. Um, you need to be able to look at different angles um, so that you can get the best out of it and the most out of it. Um, so yeah, that would be me. Thank you so much. So of course, if you want to be in touch with someone who's recently gone into her journey with data, who's come from a kind of a, a, a grad, um, a, a grad roadmap, so taken a route from an undergraduate degree, then gone into a master's, gone into photo boxes and really thriving, please talk to Samia. Again, all her links are on here. It'll be by email as well. Um, Talia, you're up next. One word, please. Um, I would say passion. I think you, you, if you don't have passion for data, it's going to be very difficult to work in data. I think everything else is secondary, so I think definitely passion. Fab, thank you. Again, with Talia, her experience is she has so much experience in data, but now she's transitioning outside of that very professional data remit into her own business, thinking about how you can consult and coach others and really focused on upskilling the next generation with diversity being a big, big um, uh, kind of uh, focus point. Lucy? Um, hi, I would say uh, data is an asset, which we need to, we need to understand the power of that in order to leverage it. Um, and um, if I if I had a second one as well, I'd also say the ability to look to have the ability to look past what is in front of you. You know, is that almost that thing of seeing around corners? I, that's a huge skill, and I think that's why employers put. Um, you know, they want um, 
somebody to come and work for them that's got two to four years experience because they have that that kind of that card in their deck you know it's their kind of like their their bit of magic that they've got but actually even if you've come from school to university or you you've bypassed that and you know you don't have to have worked in those corporates to get that experience and that exposure you know the whole world is like we're all learning it's it's online um and we can do it from our bedrooms you know as well so um yeah seeing seeing past what is in front of you is is really important fab thank you and lucy remember isn't necessarily a data scientist but she works in data and so she uses a lot of her soft skills to liaise and create those strong relationships between university students, between academics, between hiring managers, between companies. And so to be in data, Lucy is a great reminder that you don't just need to be a data heavy, um, kind of, you don't have to have data heavy characteristics. You can use the non-technical and the softer skills to, to transform your roles in data and equally focusing on being that asset for the company and providing different qualities. And I'm going to bring Andy and Jez into this conversation. So, Jez, your your one word. Are you still on the call? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, can I can. Now? Okay. So, uh, no, I, I would say go for un get in your head around understanding the art of the possible because anything is possible when you've got the right data in front of you. Thank you. And Andy, your last uh, your last kind of ending statement, your one word. Uh, I, I can never have one word. Uh, mine <laughs> wasn't one word, Andy, don't worry. <laughs> that's a, um, I had about 15. A, um, <laughs> someone said seen around corners. There is a very good book written by um, Graham. Gra yes. Uh, yeah, who, great who, Graham Hogg. He, he's written a book. Try and get it. Read it. Um, it's a, he's a Marine, was a Marine and they uh, they looked at how they can assimilate all that data to help people on the front line. Um, his books are wonderful, really easy read. So that's one to, that's a good one to read, um, seen around corners. Um, the the one word for me is bonkers. Uh, every, every other <laughs> word has been has been taken. I want passion, I want um, lateral thinking, I want curiosity. Um, but I think you've got to be a bit bonkers uh, to work in data. Um, you've, got to, you've got to love some technical skills. You've got to love ones and zeros. You've got to love technology and be able to speak to uh, engineers and business people and assimilate all that together to provide a nugget of something that, that people are going to make a decision on. So I think you've got to be a bit bonkers to be able to do that, which means, um, yeah, you, you probably look like me with no hair after 25 Major years. You're perfect, eh, Andy? Too right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone for joining of course i hope that you've had so much information to take away and most importantly it's really encouraged you to take that leap of faith in data whatever that role might look like again the the hygiene factors the key words that we've all mentioned include ethics curiosity passion asset understanding the art of the possible it's not really a word but you know we'll get always a vibe and bonkers Again, connect with all of us. I have put our LinkedIn's in the email, but again, um, we'll, we'll reiterate them in the chat. Send your questions, get involved with Andy, get involved with Jez, and get involved with all our speakers for different attributes. And make sure that you, make sure that you send us success stories, to be honest. We all wanna hear what you've done, where you've gone into data, where you've thrived, and, and how you've really truly inspired the next generation of change. So my name is Sonia Barlow. I have put my LinkedIn and my Instagram. Please do follow me, do connect with me. And I hope that you will have a great evening and stay safe during this time um, whilst we are all at home. So thank you. Bye everybody. Catch up Bye. soon.